Hi, this is Stephen Roselle. I'm a senior technical specialist at Autodesk, focusing on Maya, and I'm going to cover the latest updates for blend shape, creation, and editing, as well as post space deformation in Maya 2016 Extension 2. There's a lot of new stuff to talk about. Before we get started, uh, the character that we're going to be working on here is uh, the hero character Gerard from the popular game Witcher 3. Everybody's probably seen him by now. Uh, he's on loan to us by a studio called CD Project, so I want to thank them for the asset. So we'll be using him showing uh, the various blend shape and PSD workflows. And for starters, we're going to start with the new shape editor. Um, if I go into animation editors now, we have the shape editor. The shape editor is basically the replacement to the legacy blend shape editor. And what it allows you to do is not only create blend shapes, but also modify and edit them along the way. So we've got a couple of blend shapes in here already. One for the eyes, which is basically just a squint, uh, open and close. We've got another one for the cheeks, which is basically kind of a puff cheeks effect. And then we've got another one here, which is more of a kind of a lip pucker. I'm gonna talk about how we can use these in a second, but for starters, let's just go over the basic creation process. So in 2016, we added the ability to create kind of in-context blend shapes. And by, by that, what I mean is the ability to actually create blend shapes kind of on the fly uh, on a skinned character or a skinned mesh. So I'm actually going to go in here and kind of rotate these joints. This is just a simple uh, series of joints for the head and maybe rotate a jaw joint here to open the mouth. And what you can see here is I've kind of posed this character um, away from its default bind pose. Now in the past, I'd have to actually go back to the original bind pose, create a copy of the mesh, modify the copy in order to generate blend shape targets. Now I can actually do that on the fly. I can either create the blend shape directly from in here, the blend shape node, or if the blend shape node exists, I can simply add a target to that node. Now I want to go in and modify that. I can go into an edit mode uh, by default, or I can turn that on and off, which basically means that any changes that I make to this mesh, whether it be uh, through something like soft select or sculpting, for instance, if I take the lip and move this up to create kind of a, kind of a scowl effect, that's going to happen as an offset, essentially applying that as delta values uh, for the target. Uh, allowing me to turn that on and off or enable and disable that very easily. So any edits that I make while I'm in this edit mode get applied specifically to that target and will not inadvertently affect the source mesh at all. So now I can begin to look at these kind of in context. I can combine the various effects. I can combine the pucker with the scowl and so on. Uh, we'll get into combined effects here in a minute, but I basically just wanted to show the general workflow. For now, let's actually just turn that off and we'll rotate the jaw you know, back up into kind of more of a closed position. And let's create a couple of other blend shapes using a few other techniques. So once again, let's go in and add a target. And by the way, you can right click just to rename these very easily. So along the way, I'm just gonna call this, uh, I'll just call this scowl for lack of a better word, just so I can remember what it is. Now I'll add a new target. And with the new target, instead of using soft select, which is what I used before, I'm going to use the sculpt tool. Now you can access the sculpt tool from your marking menus, or you can use the sculpt shelf up here. And any of the standard sculpt tools can be used uh, for this. Um, I'm going to use the grab brush for now, and I'm gonna get a nice big radius, and I'm gonna take the eyebrow, and I'm gonna start to push the eyebrow kind of inward and down. So I want him to kind of, kind of give me uh, a scowl with the eyes instead of the mouth. So now what I want to do is actually start to modify how this is actually affecting the character. So what you'll see is that the eyebrow uh, is basically being blended in and out as I change the slider for the blend shape. But what you'll notice is it's affecting the nose and it's also affecting the eyelids. It even affects the lower eyelid because of the way I created it. So what we can do is use a new tool uh, which is also on the sculpting shelf. You see I've got a variety of new options here. One of them is the erase tool, uh, which basically right here allows me to do exactly that. It allows me to erase the effect of the blend shape wherever I paint. So if I were to come in here and paint over the lower eyelid, I'm actually erasing the effect of that blend shape on the lower eyelid. Likewise, on the nose, I can blend that off, paint that off, uh, so it removes the effect on the nose. And if I have any overshoot, like right there on the other eyebrow, I can remove that. And then if I get a small brush, I can actually come in here and get really close to the eye and actually just kind of paint out that upper eyelid very carefully. So now what I've done is basically erased the effect where I don't want it, but I've preserved the effect where I do want it. So now when I blend this in and out, you can kind of see the end result there. 
Now it's a little harsh right here, so we've added a new tool called Smooth, uh, which will basically not smooth the actual mesh, but it will smooth the blend shape uh, values, blend shape offsets. So if I go into the smooth mode, I'm not actually smoothing, again, the mesh in a traditional sense. I'm actually blending in the blend shape so that it will just kind of recede into the or fade into the, the underlying uh, source mesh. So it's just going to give me a much smoother, kind of cleaner transition. So now as I blend, you can see I have a nice little fall off there with the blend, and I can kind of just go back and forth kind of around different areas to kind of fade that in and out. There we go. So that's starting to look a lot better. I might actually want to fade a little bit more in here and just kind of go back and forth until I get something that is uh, acceptable. And again, I can always go in and erase sections if I overdid that, like I added a little bit too much weight down here. So I'll just erase that. And now I've got something that is looking more or less the way that I want it to look with the, with the eyebrow. So let's go in and just rename this really quickly. So I'll just rename this to, we'll just call this uh, for simplicity, left eyebrow. And let's talk about how I can reuse different blend shapes in different ways. So now that I've created the blend shape for the left eyebrow, I can basically go in and just uh, make that uneditable. So now I've disabled the editability of that particular blend shape. And I can do some really interesting things with it. So assuming I have a symmetrical character, I can actually right click on this and I can mirror and or flip the target. So if I flip the target, what's going to happen is it's going to flip that over to the other side. And so now instead of affecting the left eyebrow, it's going to affect the right. If I undo that, instead I can also go in and mirror. And what that's going to do is it's going to copy and paste basically over to the other side. So now I have a left and a right with one slider. And then another interesting thing that I can do if I undo that step is you can just simply duplicate the target. So I can come in here, right click and say duplicate target. And now what I'm going to get is basically a compounded or basically kind of two times the blend shape. So I have my original left eye and now eyebrow, and now I have my new left eyebrow, except I want to take that one and I want to flip this over to the other side so that now I'll have the same control with the right eyebrow. So let's actually just rename this really quickly just so I'll remember what it is. And we'll call this, again, right eye brow. Now, another cool thing that I can do, you see I have these two different controls, one for the left eyebrow, one for the right eyebrow. And then remember I had this other one here for the eye squint. So I may actually want to combine those together so that I can work with them in unison. So what I can do is select the squint, select the left and right eyebrow, and then I can go in and I can create a group here. So I can just right click and say group, and that will put all of this into the eye group. So if I just rename this, uh, once again, I'll just call this eye group. And now I have the individual controls for each eye. I have the individual control for the left brow and the right brow. And then I have the master control for the entire group. So I can turn the entire group on and off. If I max these all out to 100%, now that group will work as essentially the equivalent to one blend target. But if I ever need to, I can actually go in and I can very subtly tweak the underlying individual layers left to right and separating the eyelids out from the eyebrow and so on. So you can create as many of these groups as you need to to help kind of categorize the different types of blend shapes and also help combine the different effects. Now there are a couple of other more advanced ways of working with this so that I can actually combine blend shapes in, in these really kind of interesting ways. So I'm actually going to turn off, uh, I'll put the squint at about halfway and I'll just turn off the right and left eyebrow. And we'll actually come around to the side. Let's actually just put our character back into just the standard original pose. So I'm gonna get rid of the rotation on these various joints. And then we'll talk about actually a way to kind of composite a couple of blend shapes together. So what you can see here is I've got my original kind of mesh back with very little blend shape effects. And I've got these two sliders, one for the pucker, which is the lips. And then I've got a separate one for the cheek. Oops, that's the wrong one right here for the cheeks, which is kind of uh, bulging the cheeks, like filling with air. So now what I want to do is actually combine those. So what you'll notice is if I put the pucker and the cheeks together, they kind of work together, but they don't really work together uh, the way that I want them to. So what I can do is max those out, put them both at 100%, and 
shift select them and then right click in here and I can create what's called a combination target. And a combination target is going to essentially combine those into one blend shape and link that blend shape back to them. So those are going to drive this in shape. And so this also has an edit mode after it's created. So what I can do is I can come around here to the side, for instance, and I can go in and say, well, not only do I want to pucker, but I want to actually have the lips move out a little bit as it puckers. And then I might want to grab the, the point here and actually let's just turn on my symmetry so I can work on both sides. Might want to pull this out a little bit and then I might want to grab, say, the cheeks and do the same thing. I'm going to set my soft select to be a little bit higher and I'm just kind of pushing everything forward. I'm going to grab a few more points and basically what I'm creating is kind of a, an exaggerated pucker kind of uh, cheek bulge. So what you can see now, I'll turn the edit mode off, is that I have my cheeks which do one thing and I have my pucker which does another. Now if I do these individually, the pucker goes out about like that and if I do this individually, the cheeks pull, bulge out about like that. The interesting thing is when I combine these together, you can actually uh, get a secondary effect. So now I'm actually having the lips go out a little bit farther. And you can actually see this just by simply toggling off the effect of that, uh, that combined blend shape. So now basically I can use these together to create kind of this interesting kind of combined effect. And whenever they max out to 100%, you'll notice this value changes. As I dial these in and out, it shows you how much that is contributing to the ultimate effect of that uh, combined target. Now I can go in here and I can basically rearrange these if I want to, and I can basically put these into, say, a group so I can simplify this uh, and kind of organize everything into, say, the, the mouth blend shape or whatever it wants to be. Um, and now I can basically turn this all on and off with one single group, and then I can dial out the influence of any one of these particular targets. And again, ultimately that's driving the blend target. So let's go up and take a look at the eyes now. I'll just kind of dial that back a little bit. Um, let's go, and actually we can just turn that off for that matter and just remove the effect. Uh, let's go and take a look at the eyes. So if I go around to the right side, remember I have a squint here, and the squint basically opens and closes those eyes. So the squint may be fine, but what you'll notice is it's actually just a linear effect. So I have the squint off with the eyes open, I have the squint on with the eyes closed, but I'm getting this very linear motion of the eyelids going in and out, or rather up and down. So what I can do is with the squint, I can find the midway point, and let's just say exactly 0.5. It doesn't have to be, it could be any value. But let's just say uh, that at the midpoint, I actually want to change how that interpolation happens. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to create an in-between target. Now the in-between target is a number of different ways that I can work. I'll just apply this as a relative target type and I'll say that I want to use a max influence, a custom uh, max influence weight and I'll apply. And what I'll get is basically a new target that I can work with. So by default, I'm just going to have the same exact kind of linear motion. But again, if I set this to 50% and I want to change this, I can go into this new in-between and put that into an edit mode. Now let's actually go back to where I was. I want to go to 0 0.5 somewhere in there. And actually, I want to set the value of the uh, squint in between to be 0.5. And you'll see a little red tick mark now. That red tick mark represents where, uh, or rather yellow, it's going to represent where the in between kicks in. So now what I can do is right at that point, I can go into edit mode for the in between. And I can grab the eyelids here. And let's just dial down. I'm going to use soft select. And I'll dial down the influence to only affect the eyelid there. And I'm going to pull this out and I'll do the same thing with the upper eyelid. I'm working uh, with symmetry on here. So I'll do the same thing over here where I'll pull this eyelid out like so. And now what you'll notice is that as I go into and out of this uh, blend shape for squint off and on, I have this little kind of almost bump out where it's starting kind of inset and then it goes out and then it comes back in. Now the problem is that's very crude because it's just doing a linear uh, interpolation, but I can easily switch this to something like a smooth interpolation and then I can get a much more natural transition. So now basically I'm getting an effect where it starts out uh, up, 
it pushes out and around and then rotates kind of back in and then settles into kind of a squint uh, position. And you can also change the shape of this. This is the fall off curve. So you can set it to be linear. You can set it to be a custom value or smooth. And these handles can be adjusted uh, independently if you wanted to create a very specific fall off effect. But again, just to reiterate here, zero, blend target, the in-between, and then back to a one where it's fully closed with a nice transition uh, in between. So the last thing to point out is uh, that you can keyframe directly from this interface as well. So let's turn off the editability of that for now, and we will go back to the mouth, and let's just turn this off, and let's just say we want to animate these uh, values for the mouth uh, over time. So I'll start at zero. I'll keyframe that and you'll see that you get a red value to indicate that you have a key. If you change the time, then you'll see that the values update. So I get pink if there's a keyframe, I get red if there's a keyframe on that frame. So now if I go forward, let's say 30 frames, I can go in and I can uh, turn that on, click the little button here on the right, that'll keyframe that once again. Again, you get visual update to let you know what's been keyed and what hasn't. And now as I slide through, you can see I get a visual highlight to let me know uh, that that particular channel or that particular target has been keyed. Now I can go down to a lower level as well and I can actually grab you know, any one of these underlying sliders and I can key those on at different points in time to kind of layer the effect of the on and off. So now it starts with the cheeks and then it adds the, the lip pucker or vice versa after the fact. So you get the basic idea, hopefully. Um, so as you can see, we've made huge improvements to the way that you work with blend shapes in Maya and the way that you create and edit them.